Welcome to Saturday Morning in the Kitchen. And we're starting out very early today in the kitchen. And I'm just going to let you see what I do in order to prepare before I get ready to cook. We're going to uh, take a look at some items and we're going to actually do some cooking. we got to get serious right here in this kitchen. So grab a seat, get a cup of coffee, and let's get ready. I opened up an order from Amazon and I thought, well, let me break down this box. There's no need in putting it into the recycling the way it is because, you know, you're going to have to break it down anyway. So do it now before I have to put it down and then do it later. So I try to make sure that before I put it out that I've taken care of that. So I'm using my scissors and I'm just going to break this box down very quickly before I get into showing you what the item is. It's going to be a lot of fun and I think it's going to be something that you will like. So let's get it done. When you first get a new cast iron skillet or whatever it may be, um, you want to make sure that number one, you wash it well and you dry it well and that then I like to put it on the stove, warm it up and not too hot of course, I don't want to warm it to smoking, but then I'll rub it down with some oil. And what really keeps your cast iron perfect is using it. You want to use it. You want to fry your bacon. You want to uh, cook a roast, slow cook a roast. You want to be able to, of course, bake bread in it. And you want to be able to even simmer a stew in it. But the reality of it is, is that you want to make sure that you're using your cast iron skillets as often as possible. I have already unloaded the sink and I'm just putting a few things uh, back into the, the dishwasher like our coffee cups and uh, I had a couple of glasses that needed to go in so I've done that and I've taken the dish the clean dishes out of the dishwasher but I hadn't quite put them back in all of them back in 
So we're just going to take a moment and get a few things put back so that the counters are clear. It will give me a chance to uh, just kind of move around this morning, get warmed up, and uh, get items back where they're supposed to be. You know, that's always a, a refreshing feeling is to be able to come into your kitchen and before you start cooking, have a nice, clean space. So that's typically what I do. I come in, make sure everything's put away, and then I can start to actually begin the cooking process. And certainly on Saturday mornings, that's exactly what I want to do because I want to get as many things prepared on Saturday so that Sunday and the rest of the week go along a little smoother. So we're just going to get things, as I said, put away and I'm moving about the kitchen. Um, you know, I have had such a wonderful week. It has been uh, quiet and um, we've had some projects that we're looking into and I thought, wow, you know, uh, my kitchen's in order. I don't have to worry about that. And um, the weather was good, so I had a chance to get out this week. And I'm just going to take my time and put each item back into the drawers. I've got all the silverware. And you'll notice that I'm kind of collecting spoons in my hand. And the reason for that is because some of the spoons go here in this drawer and other spoons are going to go over onto the coffee bar. So we're going to take care of that as well. And, and I know the spoons because they're unique to the coffee bar. They're totally different from what we keep in the regular silverware drawer. So they're very easy to spot. And I purchased them like that. So I wouldn't have an issue. So let's get the chopsticks put away. And then we're ready to get everything else back in its proper place.
I'm going to be preparing two dishes today. The first one, I'm going to need to add a little salt into this water and uh, because I'm going to cook up some pasta and we're going to put together a shrimp and pasta dish that I can either serve today or I can certainly um, put it aside into the refrigerator and have it for another night. So I'm starting with a pound of pasta and uh, I'm just going to lay it in my skillet. I know you're thinking, why are you doing it in the skillet? Well, the reason for that is because I do not want to dirty up another pan. So I'm going to cook the pasta first because the rest of the dish comes together very quickly. So we're going to do this real time and get this dish ready. So the, the water is boiling and I'm just taking a spoon and making sure that none of the pasta sticks together. And uh, this should be just enough for the big guy and I to actually have two nights of shrimp and pasta. Now, not back to back, but I'll be able to fix one, you know, prepare uh, one night of dinner, skip a few nights and then have the second night or even next week I could have this particular dinner. So we're going to let this bubble for about five to six minutes and I'm actually going to undercook it because of the fact that we're going to put it into the shrimp mixture and let it simmer for a little while. So I'm in the process of taking everything out that I'm going to need and uh, once I've done that then we'll be ready, the pasta should be ready, and this dish will come together in less than 15 minutes. So just keep watching. I'm taking the pasta over to the sink and I'm going to pour off all of the liquid. And uh, actually I'm kind of taking my time because I didn't even want to dirty up anything else. So I'm going to pour most of the juice off and then I'm going to place the pasta into a dish to sit until I'm ready to actually uh, put it into the main meal. So. I'm just using a top. You'll see that I'm draining it and uh, this was really the hard way. Why didn't I just do it and put it into a colander? It would have been so much faster, but then I would have had to wash the colander. So we're just not going to do this. So I took that top from the container and uh, used it to hold the pasta in the skillet. So there we go. And I'm going to put the pasta in this bowl. And voila, we're done. And this skillet is ready for cooking. I'm placing olive oil into the skillet and uh, quite a bit to be honest with you and what I want to do is to uh, get that olive oil up to temperature and while it's getting up to temperature we will add in some butter so it's going to be olive oil and butter I'm using half a stick of butter and about two to three tablespoons of olive oil and that's a, an estimate of the olive oil but I do want the two together. The olive oil will help keep the butter from browning and I definitely don't want that. Now I have already chopped up some onion so we're going to get the onion into the skillet. I also have some celery and uh, all of that is already prepared. So there's all of the onion
and now we're going to add the celery now my butter is is already salted so for that reason if I add any salt then it will be just a pinch to start off with because we don't want this to be too salty I'm going to add in as you can see a nice uh, heaping teaspoon of actually two of garlic and uh, that's because we like garlic so if you don't like garlic leave it out if you like garlic but maybe not as much then of course you can use less I'm going to add about a half teaspoon of black pepper into the mixture as well because this is where we're going to do the seasoning and you know I'm being reasonable with the seasoning especially with the pepper because I can always add more I've got a little bit of salt that I'm going to put into this because you know we're dealing with pasta and uh, we need to make sure that it has flavor so that's the reason why I did add a little extra salt just to make sure that we had really really good flavor and I didn't want it too salty so I'm going to stir this up you can see that those vegetables are uh, simmering away I want them to get nice and soft and once they've gotten soft you know who's going to be coming in the shrimp are going to be coming in and you know these particular shrimp I had to uh, take the shells off and they are delicious so we're going to uh, get the shrimp into the skillet I thought about what I was doing and that I would add just a touch of red pepper flakes are our pepperoncino so just a little bit because the big guy likes just a little bit of heat but not an excessive amount so we it will have flavor but it will not be hot not in the least bit now if you're sensitive to uh, red pepper flakes and obviously you won't put those in that's an option that you can use so we're going this dish as you can see is going to come together very very quickly and uh, but the size of the shrimp when you see the size of the shrimp you're gonna go wow aren't they pretty because they really were and uh, so I'm using about a pound of fresh raw shrimp and uh, we're I'm gonna turn that heat up just a little bit so that they can simmer and uh, I want them to cook and when they turn just about as pink as I like them then we will add in the pasta we have certainly taken the time to just kind of get those shrimp nestled down into the onions and the celery and into the butter and olive oil mixture but now we're going to go off the reservation just a bit and I'm going to add in about a cup and a half to two cups of wine I had a leftover bottle of wine and I thought why not use it it's just going to add even more flavor so I'm adding wine in now if you did not want the wine you can certainly add um, chicken broth or some people may add just water but when I add liquids in I want to be able to add more flavor so I would suggest either use whatever wine that you have preferably either white some type of white wine or even a rosé but not a red wine because we're dealing with, with seafood and shrimp Our shrimp are pink and now it's time to add the pasta now as you look into the skillet you're gonna see a lot of liquid but you know what that liquid is going to go directly into the pasta and season the pasta with all of this goodness that's inside of our skillet so we're gonna take our time get the pasta into the skillet 
give it a nice stir, and let it simmer for just a few moments. We've made a little bit of a mess, so you know what that means. We're going to need to clean it up. So I'm going to get my spray bottle with my water and dishwashing liquid, Get a, give my uh, cutting board a really good clean, and uh, you know, you want to clean as you go so that once dinner is prepared, you're just about finished with everything except the actual dishes that you're serving in and the vessel that you cooked in. So today we used one pot. Now let's serve up that pasta and shrimp. It's going to be delicious. Mm, 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 mm. There's our pasta. You can see the steam coming off of it with beautiful pieces of shrimp. I'm trying to put a few on top just so you can see and uh, the big guy loves this kind of menu and this kind of recipe because it's easy and uh, it's absolutely delicious. And you know what? I'm only serving two people. And look at how much food we, turned, we, we ended up with. So that means that there's going to be some leftovers for another night. So let's get it ready. Yummy. Mmm, 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 mmm. It's going to be for me and you. Let's take a taste. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Now, I don't want to burn my mouth, but boy, we're going to get some pasta and make sure we have a good flavor and it's ready to go. So, I'm going to take my bowl and go in there and eat with the big guy. We're going to start making another easy and practical meal. It is salmon croquettes. And I'm just going to pour all of the juice that is in this can off. Then we're going to uh, carefully go through the salmon because you can see how it comes out of the can. It's pretty tight. And uh, there are some things that you're going to want to do. You're going to want to um, kind of pick through it and make sure that the bones are, are gone. Some people eat the bones and certainly they just add a little more um, calcium to your, um, to your palate, but I like the bones out. So I'm going through and those bones that I can find, I am going to take out. And typically you can find the rib bones, there we go, and we can just take those out. Sometimes if there's a little too much skin in the salmon, I will also remove some of that as well. So just make sure that you have clean hands and uh, use your fingers because that's gonna be the best way to find those little bones because actually the bones are edible. They have been cooked. And uh, so as in the canning process, they were, they were pretty cooked. And um, you can just take them out. So I'm taking out some of the bones that I can find. Also picking out some of the skin. And um, that's the black portion that you see that some of the salmon skin. And it looks totally different in when the salmon has been canned versus when you see it in the grocery store and it's on the back of your salmon. So for that reason, just take your time. Those things that your family may not like, take it off. And those things that um, they can tolerate, leave it in. So uh, just bear with me as I work through this. Now, you'll notice that I'm taking my fork and kind of mashing through. And the reason for that is that if there's any little fine bones in here, they will break up. And just, they'll be, they're very easy to chew. So it's just a little tiny bit of crunch. But by the time we finish, no one will know. Salmon needs some seasoning. So that means that we are going to want to, I like to grate my uh, green pepper as fine as I can, just because it makes it easier to chew. You don't want chunks of salmon, uh, uh, chunks of green pepper in your salmon. And uh, I also like to do the same thing with the onions. Now the flavor is delicious but you just don't want large pieces. So the large pieces that are going to be left, um, I'm gonna use that in my toss salad. And yes, our side portion is going to be a toss salad with a little bit of that uh, potato salad that we made a few days ago. And um, we're just gonna be very careful while we're working with this mandolin because I have slipped with this mandolin. And uh, the thing about green peppers and onions, they're soft. So there is a device that I can use to put on the vegetables, but unfortunately it just doesn't work very well with green peppers. So I'm taking my time and just using my fingers to get the amount of green peppers that I need. And um, we won't need a lot, but you know, green peppers are very moist. So I'm gonna have to deal with the moisture as well. So there's all of that portion of green pepper, just enough. This is one can and uh, I'm gonna get a paper towel. And with that paper towel, I'm gonna put the green peppers on the paper towel and drain some of the moisture off. 
because if I put this green pepper into our salmon just the way it is, then the salmon's going to be way too wet. And we're going to have to add an awful lot of filling to get our salmon to stay together. Now, so let's take a look. I'm just going to take all of that little green pepper and get a little dish and stick it in there because off to the side because we'll use that in the salad. Now, we're ready for the onion. We're not going to use all of the onion. We're going to use some of the onion. So I need to get the skin off. I'm going to take the end off, take the skin off, and you can see how much onion I actually use. Now notice that I went to the end of the onion that is what I call the root side. And I'm going to peel the skin back because I'm going to make myself a handle and we're going to hold on to this onion just like that. And then that way I can grate the onion, save my hand and have enough for our salmon. But onion like green pepper is also very moist. So we're going to want to uh, put it on the paper towel as well and give it a chance to uh, get a little bit of the moisture out of it. So you'll notice that it makes it very easy to hold on to. And once it gets to the point where it breaks off, that's enough. That's all the onion we need. And uh, we're ready to move from there. I also have a little lemon that later... I'll just add a little bit of lemon juice to our mixture just to freshen it up, just to give it that little lift because lemon and seafood go well together. Now, I hope you noticed that I used a cutting board underneath of those green peppers and onions. And the reason for that was to have a quick and easy cleanup. And so as that little small cutting board um, was finished and it was dirty, I just put it right over into the sink so that it was out of the way. So now we're going to work on the salmon itself. And at this point, we're going to start to add all of the goodies. So we're putting in the peppers and onions. And we're, um, I'm taking all of it. See how wet that paper towel is? Those are from the juices from the peppers and onions. So we're gonna give everything a really good stir and a really good mix. And then we'll start to add in some seasoning. I've added one egg to our mixture and I'm gonna stir that up real well because what that's gonna do is that it's going to help to hold our salmon patties together. And um, you'll see that I'm just using the same spoon, same bowl, and I'm taking my hand, I'm determined. I'm not gonna use a lot of dishes. So uh, we're gonna work with what we've got and make it, make, make these salmon patties happen. Now, what do you think about salmon patties? Do you like them? I bought quite a bit of salmon back during the uh, end of the pandemic because I was building my Four Corners Pantry and I hope you did that where you put some things away so that some uh, food items and things that you could use so that when, if times got lean you would have food sitting in your pantry. I hope you did that. Okay, so I've added in a sleeve of crackers, crushed, and I thought I had my camera on, but guess what? It wasn't. 
and uh, I, I'm adding in some pepper and just a touch of our house seasoning just to give it an additional bit of flavor. And that's going to add just a tiny bit of onion and garlic, a little extra onion powder, garlic powder, uh, some more pepper, and a little paprika is going to go in there as well. So we're going to mix this up and it is going to be perfect. Now we need to add some more moisture as well as flavor. I like a little touch of mustard and uh, I'm just going to give it a little squish because it's going to add just a little depth of flavor in our salmon croquettes. Not a lot. You'll see. Just a little swizzle. And then, in addition to the egg, I'm going to add in some salad dressing. Now, you can add Hellman's or Duke's or whatever particular brand that you like. But I'm using Miracle Whip because that's what I had in my, ref in, in my refrigerator. So I'm starting off with about a tablespoon of Miracle Whip just to add some creaminess to our mixture and it will also aid in holding this together because once you add the crackers which really add, add uh, act as a filling then you're going to want to uh, make sure that everything holds together so once we get everything well mixed then um, we can look at it and you can see that i'm kind of pressing down on it and when i see that it's really mixed and uh, it's starting to hold together as I move it, then I know I'm ready. Now off to the side, I have a little bowl of uh, cornmeal mixture. It's got cornmeal, it has some house seasoning, and you'll see my little ball. It's just a little ball, almost like a tennis ball, actually a little smaller than a tennis ball. But I'm going to probably get about six or seven patties at least out of this can. So let's see how many we can get that will be nice size patties, but um, not too large. We don't want them too large. So I like to put them together in uh, little balls first and then put them into the refrigerator so they can somewhat solidify and hold together. Then I'll bring them out, roll them, and put them into the pan. So that's what I'm gonna get done, and we're just gonna work. I've placed about an inch of oil, actually probably a little less than an inch of oil, and you'll see that I'm rolling our salmon balls into our cornmeal mixture, and I'm just going to very gently pat them out, and when the oil is just right, hot enough, so that it will start to simmer and to fry those uh, salmon croquettes, we're going to be ready to cook. And I think by the time I get about four or five of them, it should be just right. They should start to simmer. Now, you know, I didn't make them gigantic. And the reason for that is because we want to, each person to have two. 
So um, we're going to each, both the big guy and I both, will be able to have two. And actually, there'll be a few left over for a salmon croquette sandwich tomorrow. Oh, salmon croquette sandwiches are delicious. Put them on white bread with a little bit of salad dressing. And oh my goodness, throw some tomatoes and onions on there. And you have a lunch. So let's get these all fried. I am so glad that you came to join me here right here in the kitchen. It's always a lot of fun when you're sitting at the counter so we can chit chat and have a lot of fun. Now today we have cooked two dishes. We have played around in the kitchen and you even came, bless your heart, and watched me clean up and uh, get things ready so that I could cook and I just enjoy that. So I'm hoping that you will have an absolutely wonderful Saturday and uh, enjoy all of the good things in life. So I'll see you soon right here on Saturday in the kitchen of Ebony, Ivy, and Ty. Blessings.